Well, to me, Papillon is a love story. It's about two men who have to go through hell in prison and initially hate each other, but end up finding out that what's freedom useful for if you, don't, if you can't share it together? I won't reveal too much of the ending, but I think it's a bonding story. Perfect. That was exactly 15 seconds. You did it. Oh, we made it out of the elevator. There are two distinct properties that exist historically. There's the source material. It was the biography of the man who existed. It's a real story about a real man in a real period of time. And then there was a really good adaptation of that story. Of course, we had to be cognizant of that and had to be conscious and confident that we had our own vision and our own um, observation, like cultural observation that we wanted to make. And, and we both came into this being very, very interested in the modern prison system and, um, and the terrible trajectory that it's taken towards privatization. I mean, it's interesting how connected often um, physical demands and emotional you know, demands end up being. You know, I had lost an enormous amount of weight for Lost City of Z, like 40 pounds, mm -hmm. and then I'd gotten, I'd put in probably 25 of that back on by the time, it was about eight months later when I started this, and I went on to the same diet and did everything exactly the same. My body just didn't respond the same, and mm -hmm. so, I, got, I ended up getting down to 145 pounds again for this, but it was really, really difficult, and it was really, I was, I was very aggressive on my body to achieve it, mm -hmm. so that then had a pretty negative effect on my disposition day to day. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the nicest, easiest person to be around, and I think that that's one of the things about a great director and providing the environment is just giving the room for that, like, all right, Charlie's on once a day, just give him a wide berth, and mm -hmm. you know, Let's just keep on going. We're in the ring together. I mean, I'm, he's in the ring and I'm looking at him, <laughs> right. trying to catch everything. So right. that's kind of like my job. Tell me about sort of the isolation sequence um, for your character, what that was like for you, and as a director, what were the challenges of sort of shooting that sequence, which I think people are already starting to talk about. Well, I mean, for me, that was, that was, that was truly coming back to what I cinematically consider some of the primordial DNA of how, what I consider filmmaking. Uh, not necessarily a man alone in a room, mm -hmm. but a man confronting himself. And I think it's, it's also the DNA of what we try to convey in the film, which is uh, the worst thing you can do uh, in modern prisons is actually to isolate people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have some people who also appear in the film who have actually experienced this themselves. And people would rather be with other people they dislike or they even fight with, because to be alone with yourself also demands that you actually listen to your own silence. Mm -hmm. It was at the end of the shoot and I was a bit panicked about like still wanting to lose a little bit of weight and <clears throat> I, do, I don't know, Michael and I both just decided we did it together, we said we're just going to stay here and uh, I think Michael ate a little bit, I didn't eat for eight days and I just stayed in that cell and it got weird and it got uncomfortable and, uh, and, I, and, and certainly like there was some existential like crisis mm -hmm. uh, on the horizon and those quiet nights when the whole crew would leave and I'd just be in that cell alone. But I just thought, you know, if I can't do this for eight days, I got no business playing this dude who would do it for five years. You know, right. I'm just pretending. Mm -hmm.